Um, take a look at this pro particular problem. It's a good one. Remember that energy always has to be conserved. So in this case, we start out with a car that starts out here that's 30 meters above the ground. It's going to roll down this track without friction. It's going to pass by point B, then by point C, then roll back up here again until it hits point D, where it's going to compress this little spring that's right there. And down here, we've got pie graphs. Now, you probably did pie graphs back in middle school or elementary school. In this case, I want us to know what fraction, so the, the entire pie graph represents all the energy of the system. And you'll notice that all of these pie graphs for point A, B, C, and D are the same size. Why? All the energy has to be conserved. The total amount of energy has to be the same. But what's going to happen is the fraction of our pie that's in certain types of energy is going to change. So at point A, it's stationary. What kind of energy does it have at point A? And I'm hoping you'd say, oh, OK, wait. The only type of energy it has in this case is gravitational potential energy. So our entire pi graph is going to be U sub g, potential energy due to gravity. What's going to happen when it gets to point B? Well, now it doesn't have as much gravitational potential energy, but what did it can get converted into at point B? And I'm hoping you're going to realize, wait a second, energy stays the same. I've, I've lost gravitational potential energy. What's it being converted into? It's being converted into kinetic energy. How did I know to make this roughly one-third of the graph this time for this one? The answer is, is I've got one-third of the initial height. So if all of it, all of the entire pie chart was gravitational potential energy to begin with, now it should be one-third, which means the remaining two-thirds is now kinetic energy. At point C, my height is zero. How much GPE or gravitational potential energy or U sub G do I have at this point? The answer is none. So what should the graph look like? How much kinetic energy should you have? Think about it before you go forward in this video. And the answer should be, it's all kinetic at point C. And then finally at point D, we've got where our height is back to 20, which means, oh yeah, we've got some gravitational potential energy, but it stops at point D. And so I want to introduce one last new type of energy that we're going to be dealing with, and that is this. So I've got two-thirds of my gravitational potential energy. And then the, the other type of energy, what's it being stored in? It's being stored in this compressed spring, just briefly, as it stops here before it starts shooting backwards again. Uh, we have energy stored in the spring, and we call that potential energy, capital U, sub E for elastic potential energy. So it's energy stored in that compressed spring. And hopefully you see at this point, all the energy stays the same. It just gets converted from one form to the other. In this case, I have no friction, so there's no energy dissipated, no heat being generated, hopefully no sound. I'm making that assumption. Take a look at, these are a couple examples from your worksheet you're about to do, worksheet zero or worksheet one from this section. A, a wind-up toy is wound up, then walks across a table and comes to a stop. What would their graphs look like? And I'm going to assume that you've wound it up, and it's just the point where the internal spring where it's storing the energy is gone. And these arrows here represent the, the velocity of the object. So at point, this first point A over here, I should label this as point A. Here's point B. Here's point C. I'm going to say that at that point right there, it's all kinetic energy. No more energy stored in the spring. No elastic potential energy. But now what's happening to our rabbit? Our rabbit is slowing down, which means at point B, I'm going to have less kinetic energy. So something like that. I'm going to say a fourth. You're like, oh, wait, how'd you know a fourth? I didn't actually measure the velocity vectors. These are qualitative, not quantitative graphs. So don't panic. Just show that it's some smaller fraction. Where'd the rest of the energy go to? You know that if you wind up an animal like this, it eventually comes to a stop. Where did all the stored energy go? And the answer is, I'm hoping you guessed it already, it's going to be in the form of dissipated energy. And instead of saying energy dissipated, I'm just going to say E sub dis for dissipated energy, which makes some sense. And then finally at point C, it stops completely. It's not moving anymore. No more kinetic energy. Where did all the energy go? It all went to heat, noise, and even that noise eventually is going to end up as heat. So in the last step, the entire is e dis. 
Now, I need to warn you, this is one of many solutions. I could have said, hey, it's got some you know, elastic potential energy in here, and it's got some kinetic energy. And then here you might say it still has a little bit of elastic and a little of kinetic. Um, there's lots of ways to answering this, but you should, in any case, have the E dis increasing as you go through this. You can add e or elastic potential energy, U sub E, if you want. Uh, it's up to you. So that's why I say this is one of many solutions. And I want to do one more with you just real quick, or a couple more with you. In this case, it's a ball bouncing. So it starts out here at point A, and at point B here, it hits the ground and compresses. And at C, it bounces back up again. At D, it hits the ground again and compresses. And then you'll notice each time it doesn't bounce quite as high. So we know that it's, we're generating E dis. And my question is, is, when is it generating heat? And you might say, oh, it's air resistance. Well, yeah, as it bounces, as it's moving through the air, it generates a little bit of heat. But where does most heat come from? It actually comes from when it hits the ground and compresses. If you've ever taken a racquetball and just done bounce it back and forth like this a bunch or compress a bunch, it actually gets warm. And that's because every time you compress it and release it, the rubber bends and it actually gets all the molecules excited. It, gets, it makes it warm. So in this case, what am I going to look at or what I'm going to assume is that all the heat's being generated when it hits the ground. So it's going to start out here, I'm going to say, entirely with gravitational potential energy. And then when it hits the ground, what kind of energy does it have? It doesn't have any gravitational potential energy because the height is zero. Where's all the energy stored? Pause the video, think about it. But it should be in elastic potential energy. But notice that I didn't make all of it. Why? Because I told you, as it gets compressed, it's like a spring that's storing all the energy right now. But during that compression, what's happening? Some of the energy is being converted to energy dissipated, heat. And that's going to keep getting larger each time it hits the ground. At point C, I'm assuming now after it leaves the ground, it doesn't lose any more energy. So it still has the same amount of heat that it had after it hit the ground there. But now it's all being converted back into gravitational potential energy when it's up here at this point C here. Now it's going to fall and hit the ground again. When it hits the ground again, what's going to happen to the E dis? It's going to get larger. It's going to increase. I'm going to generate more heat. And what's going to happen to the elastic potential energy? U sub E, it's going to get smaller percentage of our whole pie chart. And then finally at E, it bounces back up again. I'm not going to lose any more energy, but now notice I have less gravitational potential than I had before. At this point, that's supposed to be an E, believe it or not, <laughs> at this point here. Um, and as it continues on, each time it hits the ground, it's going to generate a little bit more heat, and each time it bounces up, it's not going to bounce as high each time. Where'd the energy go? It's going into heat. Take a look at this last problem before I let you go on the worksheet. It's a truck being driven at constant velocity down the street. You're like, Pfft. oh, this is the easiest one on the sheet. It's just like, dun, dun, dun. It's all kinetic energy. It's all kinetic energy. It's all kinetic energy. If this was true, hmm, this would be quite handy. You would never have to add any energy to your car to keep it going at a constant speed. In reality, you might know, wait a second, to keep your truck going at a constant speed down the road, you have to burn petrol or gasoline. So what's going on here? In reality, it's probably better to think about it this way. The kinetic energy is constant in each case, but we do have some energy being converted into heat. Think about it. Your car engine gets hot. Where is it getting that heat energy from? It's getting it from the gasoline that you're burning. And I'm going to give it, uh, say it's already got a little E disk at this point. And you might say, What's, what in the world is U sub C? U, potential energy, sub C for chemical potential energy, the energy stored in the gasoline molecules. And now what am I going to say on this one? What's going to happen? I'm going to end up with a little bit less and less chemical potential energy as the car is going down the road. And my E disk is going to increase as you go along. So my next step on this one, what I want you to try real quick, is take a look at worksheet 0501. We've done a couple of these real quick. We've done number two, we've done number four, and we've done number eight together. But could you please try the rest of these? Again, ask me any questions as you go along. Good luck with this one, and we'll talk to you in just a minute.